Hi, welcome to this Corbomaz video on linear graphs. In this video, we're going to look at linear graphs that represent real life situations. So we're going to look at a graph that looks at how much a plumber charges for different jobs. We're going to look at a linear graph that represents the depth of water in a paddling pool as it's been emptied. And we're going to look at an example that is a linear graph that is, represents the, the cost that a courier charges for deliveries based on the distance he travels. Okay, so let's have a look at these examples. But before we do, I would highly recommend that you watch three other videos on Corbett Mavs. They are drawn linear graphs, gradient, and the equation of a line, which is y equals mx plus c. And those three videos will be really useful. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example. So Dara is a plumber, and the graph shows how much he charges for each job. And for each job, there is a call-out fee and a charge per hour. Now, certain people that you bring out to your house, such as plumbers or electricians, they, they charge a call-out fee, which is a certain amount of money they charge for just coming to your house in the first place. And then they'll maybe perhaps charge you at an hourly rate. Another situation which is a bit like that is a taxi. Sometimes whenever you get into a taxi, the taxi driver, he or she will press a button and it'll start perhaps at two pound to begin with. And then as the taxi travels, then the price goes up. But there's a set fee, a fixed fee or a call out fee that sort of is an amount that you have to pay straight away. And then you pay for the extra hours on top of that or the extra miles if you're in a taxi. So as you can see, we've got this straight line graph and it starts at 0 80 so that means it's 80 pound for zero hours so that 80 pound is the call out fee so the call out fee is going to be 80 pound and then as you can see the line goes up because as each hour passes dara charges a certain amount of money so a one hour job would last it would cost 100 pound a two hour job would cost 120 pound a three hour job would cost 140 pound and so on all the way up to this graph shows a six hour job which costs 200 pound Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. So our first question says, how much does Dara charge for a job lasting two hours? So let's have a look at our graph and we'll go to two hours and we'll go up. Make sure you use a ruler for this and you go across. And when you do that, you'll see that the charge for that job would be 120 pound. Our next question. Our next question this time tells us that the job costs 180 pound. How long did it last? So if we have a look at this vertical axis, you have got 0, 40, 80, 120 and so on. It's gone up in 40 pounds and we're looking for 180. Now 180 is in the middle of 160 and 200. So 180 would be here. So that means if we use our ruler and go across to the line and down, we'll see the length of that job. So that job lasted five hours. So our next question. So the next question says, how much is Dara's call-out fee? So we've talked about what a call-out fee is. So a call-out fee is how much you pay for someone just to call out, to just go to your house to begin with. So zero hours, as you can see, this vertical intercept, this y intercept is 80. So the call-out fee is 80 pound. And the next question says, how much does Dara charge for each hour? So let's have a look at our graph. Well, we know the call-out fee is 80 pound. And then after one hour, the charge is 100 pound. After two hours, the charge is 120 pound. After three hours, the charge is £140. After four hours, the charge is £160. After five hours, it's £180. And after six hours, it is equal to £200. So as you can see, for every hour we go across, it goes up 20. We go across an hour, it goes up 20. We go across an hour, it goes up 20, and so on. So every single hour, the charge is increasing by £20. So Dara charges £20 an hour. Now, another way to look at that is we could have worked out the gradient off that line. The gradient is the rate of change. It's showing you how the charge is changing for every one you move across that horizontal axis. So each one here is one hour. So if we work out the gradient, it'll tell us how much the charge is changing for every hour. So in other words, Dara's hourly rate. So we could have just chosen two points. So let's just choose two points here. Let's choose our one hour and six hours. And let's work out the gradient of the line. So remember, the gradient can be worked out by using the formula rise over run, or if you prefer y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, whatever you prefer. I like using rise over run. So I choose my two points, and I work out the gradient of the line between them. So I draw a little triangle, like so. Our run, how much we're going across by, well, well, we're going from one hour to six hours, so that's five hours we're going across. And vertically, we're going from 100 pound up to 200 pound. So the rise is equal to 100. So if we do the rise divided by the run, well, 100 divided by five is 20. So that means the gradient of this line is 20. So the y-intercept will represent, in this situation, his call-out fee. And the gradient of the line will represent his hourly rate, how much he charges per hour. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So next question says, Beth is a full paddling pool and the graph shows the depth of water in the paddling pool 
d centimeters over the time t seconds. So the pool's been emptied out and it starts at the very beginning at zero seconds, it's got a depth of 70 centimeters. And as you can see, the line's got, it's just coming down, so it's got a negative gradient. And as you can see, the depth is just decreasing and decreasing as time goes on. So by the time we reach 12 seconds, the depth of the water is 10 centimeters. So the question continues, it says, the graph intersects the vertical axis at 70, what does this represent? Well, as we've talked about it, because it was zero seconds, that would be the full paddling pool. It was the depth of the full paddling pool. So the depth of the paddling pool before Beth started emptying it and it was 70 centimeters deep. Okay, our next question. Our next question says, find the gradient of the graph. So we know that at zero seconds, it had a depth of 70, and we know that at 12 seconds, it had a depth of 10. So let's work out our gradient, our rise over run, so, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, however you prefer to work it out. So our run going across, well, we're going from zero to 12, so that's 12. And our rise, well, we're going down, so it's gonna be negative. So it has got, we're going from 70 to 10, so it's gonna be negative 60. So our gradient is negative 60 divided by 12. Now 60 divided by 12 is five, so negative 60 divided by 12 will be negative five. So the gradient of the graph is negative five. So the question continues and it says, explain what the gradient represents. So the gradient is how much the line is going up or down by for every one you go across. So because our horizontal axis is in seconds, it means in every second, the depth of the water is going down by five centimeters. It's saying that as you go across one, it goes down five, across one, down five, across one, down five, and so on. So the gradient, the gradient represents the high, the depth of the pool changes every second. So there's a five centimeter decrease every second. Okay, and our last question. Our last question, we're told that Freddy is a courier and for each item he delivers is a fixed charge and then there's also a charge for the distance. So we've got our vertical axis, which is our delivery cost, which goes zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 pounds. That's called C pounds, so our cost. And then we have our horizontal axis, which is our distance and it's D miles. So we've got zero miles, five miles, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And as you can see, it starts at two. So that means our fixed charge is going to be two pound. That intercept is two for zero miles. So it's two pound fixed charge. And then it goes up to, and it reaches for 30 miles, it reaches a cost of 14 pounds. So the first question, it says, how much is the delivery cost if the distance is 15 miles? So we go to 15 miles and we get our ruler and we go up and we go across and we reach eight pound. So the cost is eight pounds. And the next question says, the delivery cost was five pounds. What was the distance of the delivery? So if we go to five pound on the vertical axis, so that'll be here in between four and six in the middle, and we go across and we go down, we get in the middle of five and 10. Now in the middle of five and 10, the midpoint of five and 10 will be 7.5. So the distance is 7.5 miles. Okay, our next part. Our next part says, how much is the fixed charge? Well, we spoke about that. That's the y-intercept, which is for zero miles is two pounds. So the fixed charge is two pounds. Okay, our next part says, how much does Freddie charge for each mile? So that's gonna be the gradient of the line. So if we choose two points, I'm gonna choose here, zero, and I'm gonna choose here, 10, six. So we've got our point zero two to 10, six. And we wanna work out the gradient of the line because that will tell us how much the delivery cost goes up for every mile. And that'll tell us then how much Freddie charges for every mile. So our rise over run, so remember gradient is rise over run or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And our rise, we're going from two pounds to six pounds, so the rise is four pounds. And the run is how much we're going to cross, so that's going from zero to 10, so that's 10. So we've got 10. And if we do four divided by 10, we get 0 0.4. And because we're dealing in pounds, that is 0 0.4 pounds or 40p. So for every single mile, Freddie charges 40p. And our last question says, write down a formula for the delivery cost C in terms of the distance d. So that's going to be the equation of the line. So remember the equation of the line is normally y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. Now here we've got a vertical axis, which is c. So c equals mx, well m's the gradient, so our gradient was 0 0.4, so 0 0.4, x, which is the horizontal axis, which is d, and then plus our y-intercept, which is two. 
So the equation of this line is C equals 0.4D plus 2, or a formula for the delivery cost in terms of D would be the cost is equal to 0.4 times the delivery in miles, the delivery distance in miles, plus 2. And that's it.